So today we're going to work through uh, the basic bricklay pattern uh, perm design. And unlike the other perms that we've uh, focused on, this has no pre-sectioning. So you will section as you go. And the idea behind this is that for every one perm rod, it is supported or blocked by two perm rods. And what that helps to do is eliminate breaks or partings within a design. And in order to really reinforce this concept, I'm going to alternate between colors so that you can really see that uh, work through the head. The other thing that you'll focus on as we go through the bricklay pattern is it really works with the contours of the head. So typically the majority of our sections or lines that we take will always extend right out to the hairline, except in some key pivotal areas. And I will point those out to you as, as we go forward. So moving forward, typically for today, we're going to use one diameter base. So we'll measure using the diameter of our tool and we're going to measure the length of the tool. So starting from the center of the forehead, we're going to measure one diameter and one length. of our perm tool and I'll cross-reference that in a second so you can see. So the section is one diameter in width and just shy of the length of our tool and that's the way we want to be. We're going to position this hair half off base so I'll be elevating it 90 degrees from the head. An easy way to do to determine that is to place your comb or your tools straight on the head and that line should follow. So it's perpendicular from the head. Double end papers give me the most control, so I like using them. I do, the ends are nice and even, but uh, I do fluctuate back and forth from the double to bookend, depending on what it is. So I'm gonna start off with the purple or mauve perm tools. So getting in, securing my ends. And because I am dealing with a little bit of length, I like to make sure that the hair is evenly distributed across the rod. So that's why you'll see me wiggle back and forth slightly and then secure with the elastic straight and on top of the tool. So our next pattern, we're going to use the white tool and it, it's not necessary that that has to happen. I just want to be able to isolate um, the different areas that I'm working through and how each section is being blocked. So again, starting from the diameter of the tool, I'm going, remember I said we go from hairline to hairline. So I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna curve right around and make a nice straight section that follows the curves of the head. So it does have a slight curve as opposed to being perfectly horizontal across. And throughout this, adjust that just slightly here. I can cross reference at any point in this section and see that it's the same diameter as my tool. Now for this panel, in true Brooklake fashion, this section is now divided in half from the center of that tool that I just used. And this will be the next two sections that I use. So I'm just gonna get that one out of my way for right now. And because the panel is shorter than a full length tool, I can elect to go to uh, a smaller or the half size tool in order to make it fit better, which I will most likely do. So again, perpendicular half off base. Positioning, perpendicular distribution. And you will find with the bricklay that you'll alternate the perm length, perm tool length, in order to fit into the different areas. Could I use a full length tool? Yes, I could. There wouldn't be a, a mistake in doing that. It's just the size of the section that I'm working in. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with the smaller perm tools. When they're available.
Always making sure that my elastic is free from twists. You want it to be nice and straight so it's not causing additional tension on the hair or stress on the hair. Then I'll work to my next section. As I work through, if I notice that my hair starts to get damp, of course, feel free to uh, saturate it. I'm using a leave-in conditioner for detangling and to help with the porosity of the hair. You can use water or, uh, depending on the manufacturer, you may be doing a lotion wrap, so using actual perm solution or a free wrap whatever the manufacturer is recommending. So that section I used, again, the, the diameter of the tool to determine going from hairline to hairline. I'm going to continue with that pattern. So again, the diameter of that tool going out, following the curve of the head, going right around, only taking as wide as what the diameter of my tool is and come right back around to the front hairline. So as much as I said, this perm is not sectioned, it is slightly, you're sectioning as you go. We're just not working with the bigger sections, we're, we're creating almost a subsections as we go. And just for ease of use, I'm going to get, I'm just going to get rid of this hair so it can be maybe easier for you to see. So it's okay to clip up the hair that you're not working with. And then of course, I want to block. So every other row is going to look exactly the same. So my purple, I started with it in the middle, the first perm tool. So now I'm gonna go back to that and I'm gonna block these two perm rods with one. So it'll look something like this. So this section will actually become three uh, distinct sections for the perm rods. So again, going in the center of my section, I'm picking up that hair. So it is the length of my tool and the diameter of my tool. and then it will effectively block. So a bricklay pattern is often called the one, two method. Because for every one rod, it's blocked by two, then one rod blocked by two and so on and so forth. So again, just making sure my elastic is free from twists. Then I will finish off this side panel. So again, if I have available to me the shorter perm rods in the purple or mauve, I would use them in this case. And I see that I do in my tray. If you don't have them, it's okay. All that means is the rods will sit on the face slightly. When you're working through the sides, be very much aware of your elevation. Remember, we're always going perpendicular from the head. If your section, if you're not elevating perfectly perpendicular, you, your tension will be off. And then we'll finish off this panel. So when I'm talking about the sides, again, hold the comb straight out from the head so you can be have a visual of how that hair should be projected out. My ends are getting quite dry. If I was doing a full perm service, I would want to correct that. Some little loose strays there. We'll go in with some cushion wrapping. And secure it. So as you guessed it, my next section uh, I'm right-handed, so I always tend to take my sectioning from the right and work my way to the left. If you're left-handed, you would do the opposite because that will be more comfortable for you. But once again, I'm going to take it from the hairline. And what this happens to do also is it happens, it automatically 
um, dictates how those rods will be positioned. So as you can see, it'll naturally fall back like this um, as we work our way in through the crown. This will be one of those interesting areas and we'll go straight back and I'll highlight that to you. But for now, using my white, I will use the diameter of my tool. I'll section all the way across and I'll continue with this one, two method. I'm going to continue to work until this, uh, the next interesting point, which is the crown. And I'll return at that point and show you how to work around that. So I'm just finishing up the side panel, which is uh, where I left you to continue on. So you know when you're finished, it's when you're just almost at the apex of the ear. It gives you a good indication of we're going to be switching things up a little. So from the beginning, we've been extending out right to the hairline and blocking each one rod with two and following that up, the one rod block the two. And this has been extending all the way down to the hairline, in this case, the front hairline, as you can see. Now, as I get into this unique area, which is the crown, because of the fast curve of the head, I need to fill in this and almost just go to these, these perm rods as opposed to go right to the hairline. So for the next little bit, until my panels can actually reach the outer hairline or the around the edge here, I'm going to be still following the same pattern in that, you know, my purple rod will always be placed in the middle of the head and my two white rods and, and so on and so forth. But now what I'll do, it's a little bit different, I've switched the water now, is starting from here as opposed to the hairline, my next rod is purple, I'll be just carving it out here. So if you were to look, there's that diagram that I've provided in Brightspace, the, the parting will actually taper on the edge as it goes out. So the diameter of the tool, and I'm going to go just straight across here. And this will be my sectioning for my purple rods. I'm just going to clip the remaining lengths here out of my way. And the reason why I do that is because then I can drop this hair and work with it and not have to worry about it getting uh, intermixed with the down below hair. So again, I'm just going to pick up the hair that is the diameter of my tool. Project it at 90 degrees so I can have true half off base form. You'll also notice as you're looking at here, I've, you know, I, I didn't have enough short white rods, even though this section would uh, benefit from having that short tool. It, it doesn't really matter. You can just see the rod would sit more on the face, but cotton and stuff being placed there, we wouldn't have to worry for safety reasons. But definitely when I'm in these smaller sections, I want to have the smaller tool so that the rod is not sitting right on top of other rods. It, it should fit snugly and nicely in those little confined spaces. Here my section is a little bit longer. All that tells me is I'm a little off center. Not really a big deal though for the bricklay pattern. So now my next section, as I mentioned, I'm going to use from here. So I'm actually able to get right to the outer hairline and I'll extend it right down and across. But you'll see the transition in my partings with my perm rods 
where I'm on a slight diagonal forward on the sides, they're now curving and going straight back. So it's actually echoing the curves of the head. So going from a diagonal in this crown area, it's transitioning my rods to now be horizontal straight down. So I'll continue that pattern all the way through because now I've gone through in some hair types, depending on these are larger rods. So I only need to do two sections and it's uh, created that transition. Using small rods, I might need uh, three rows in this transition. Here, I'm only going to need the two and I'll quickly do it before I let you go so you can see that uh, before we progress and you work on your own and we'll meet up again but I'll just do this one really quick so again the white is dividing the purple in half then I'm taking my length of my perm tool and as you get better you'll be able to just visualize this and be able to divide it I would encourage practice of that understanding how long your section should be You're always starting from the center of your section and working your way out. You're never working from the side over. So you'll notice I always start from the sec the middle and work my way out to that hairline. blocking so in between those two rods and that's the whole idea for this term if anything it's making sure that it's effectively blocked and that'll help to eliminate those perm rod lines that uh, often occurs as a result of the service so this just diffuses it some other options for this is to weave my partings so weave all my sections and that will further help to diffuse it Today we're, we're just simp working with the simplicity of the, the brick lay. So now you can see the transition in the crown area and just below. So follow the starts just in the crown and then just comes over that curve of the head. And then that'll be done. Now, the head up straighter. Um, now I'll just continue. And so as I'm seeing this here, because um, of how it's working out, this curve, I can see that I can do one more section with the purple. No, actually I'm lying. I'll go right to the hairline and extend. Make sure that my sections don't get too wide, but I'll extend from hairline to hairline and I'll begin to wrap just regular horizontally using the bricklay pattern. So I'm gonna pause for now and I'll meet up again once I'm complete to show you the overall finished design. So I'm just getting to be uh, in the last section of my wrap. I had to change color because I started to run low on some of my tools, but it was really, again, just to show you the placement of the rods and where they are. So while I'm ending with three rods at the very nape, yours uh, may not end that way. It may end with a, a two count. It really depends on uh, the size of the rods that you're using, the, the shape of the head, the, how big it or small it is. Um, but you can start to see with my one last panel here. I'll go back and debrief in a second here, but um, you can start to see how that looks like a brick building. If you look at various uh, designs, you can see the pattern occurring with the one-two method. So as I finish, I would be, go back and put in my stabilizers, but I just want to highlight. So here in the crown areas where we had that transition, 
uh, from the top where it was going on that angle to then going straight down the bottom. We have the two rods being blocked by one, so on and so forth going out. But remember, we weren't just working in isolation, not just down the center like we've done with a lot of the perm wraps. Um, we've worked starting from, starting from the center and then working our way right out to the hairline with the exception of uh, that crown area. And if the person has a more prominent occipital bone, you may, you may have to do the same thing underneath the occipital bone as well. So that is our finished uh, bricklay pattern design that uh, you'll be working on both in lab and uh, for your hybrid assignments.